Okay, so today I'm asking why this boat spoilt it for the rest of the boat market. Also, I'm going to tell you one of the big flaws about this boat, but that will be right at the end. So let's have a look. Right, two quick things before we jump into the video. Number one, I've listened to what you've said and I've bought a mic. So you should better hear me even louder than normal. And two, I got a haircut because it was getting out of control. Oh, three, if you enjoy this channel, please, please, please press subscribe. It makes us so happy and we can give it loads more welly on future videos. Let's go again. Okay, the reason why this boat was so popular is because of this central galley, which is neither up nor down. But it was super easy to sell these boats because it's so sociable. And I'll tell you what I mean. These boats were made, this Squadron 58 was made from 2001 to 2011. Pretty much the same boat before they brought out the new 55. And the reason they didn't need to change it much is because if you were in the galley, you could, preparing drinks and food, you could talk to people in the saloon area here. You could also talk to people out in the cockpit, if you see out there. You could also, it's got this little hatch up here. Can you see that? There's a little staircase with a hatch. You could also talk to people up on the flybridge you're right up there and ask me if they wanted food and drink you could also talk to the driver if he was at the lower helm and ask him if he was okay you could also talk to any people that were sat in the dinette here so you could talk to everyone and what you probably don't know you could also talk to people in the utility room which i'll show you in a minute because you'll have to go in there it's pretty small especially for me but this made the boat super, super social. And because of that, we sold these new and I used to sell, sorry, not me, we used to sell as a company one every month. I think in 2006, every month we sold one. And remember, we only looked after the East Coast of England. It is, was a cracker. And this is the utility room. So come and have a look. pretty small down here but it's a very useful space so in here you've got a washer dryer and a fridge and you've got a big shelf there as you can see I cleared that up earlier and then come right in I'm going to show you the you uh, the USP of this boat which is and not many people know this a built-in ironing board now whenever i showed people this built an ironing board that was it the deal was done so this boat has got three cabins so you can sleep six people it's also got a tiny little crew cabin in the back that you'd never want to stay in you'd never want to put anyone to stay in it either the boat is powered by 715 horsepower volvos which give about 33, 34 knots. It's really, really nice. Also, this boat has got a very low freeboard. So what I'll do, I'll cut away now and I'll tell you what freeboard is because I bet you don't know what it is. It's really easy. Okay, so the freeboard. The freeboard is the distance from the waterline here to the gunnel, the silver part up there. So that distance there is called the freeboard. And on this boat, the freeboard is really small, which is good for center of gravity. Okay, so now you know what that is, let's go and have a look downstairs. So it's got this lovely flared stairwell, and then the master is at the bow. Come and have a look. As you can see, it's quite a nice size. It's got American cherry gloss finish, which is beautifully done. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, um, we can show you there on that wood there. 
that's all one piece of wood so you can see all the grain matched all the way through also notice how the wood is curved at the ends there and that's all extra work but it just gives you an idea of how quality these boats are built so let's go and look at the other cabins so this is the day heads it's a really nice space loads of room look i can put my legs right out you've got a lovely sink not as nice as the new princess sinks you've got a tap you've got a shaving mirror you've got little windows you've got lovely cupboards look at the curve you've got a lovely shower all stainless details even i can get in there so it's a proper size it's a really nice heads, no problems in here. Okay, so this is the port side cabin. As you can see, it's got twin beds and on the starboard side, it's replicated between beds too. Um, you could have an option of a double bed here and then uh, a dressing unit here, but this is the more useful layout. It's really nicely made. There's loads of headroom, got big wardrobes there. Got a really old fashioned TV here, that's included in the deal. It's actually a really nice space. No problems in here. Okay, here's the flybridge. And as you can see, you can come up those stairs or you can come up these stairs. I love these stairs. And I'll tell you the other nice thing about these stairs. You can sit here whilst going along and it's very, very comfortable. You can talk to the skipper and when all the sun cushions are out, you can all sunbathe around here and chat whilst eating, whilst drinking. So this really, really works. The reason they've stopped doing this on the newer boats is because it takes up a ton of space. I must say, I love it. What was so good about this flybridge is again, like below, it's so open plan. So you've got this seating here with sunbathing where everyone could be out of the wind, see behind that screen but you've got the central driving position, so everyone's kind of chatting and mingling and enjoying themselves. And at the back, you've got another area, which has got, um, that goes down to make a sun pad. So it's a very, very, this here, you've got a button. I think it's there, I can't find it, but you've got a button and that goes down and makes it into a sun pad. Now, in the year 2007, this was all the rage. Have your little power tower, uh, but as you know now, they've kind of got out of fashion. So it's back to the hoops and everything else we have these days. But a really good flybridge um, for a boat of this size. Okay, so the question I asked is why is this, why did this boat spoil it for everyone else? Well, the reason it spoiled it for everyone else is because it was good at everything. It looked good. It had three cabins, had two heads, it had a crew. It has a galley with utility. It's super social. It's got a low freeboard, like I explained earlier. Now, what does that mean? Low freeboard means that the boat has got a lower center of gravity. Lower center of gravity means the boat drives beautifully on the sea. Some boats, when you've got the back, the power down, the boat's like this. These engines are under this floor here. So the boat actually sits like this and it makes it more economical, more comfortable, and better at sea keeping. Because it's not all about sitting on the dock on these boats. These are proper boats that can go places. So this boat did everything well, and that's why it spoiled it for everybody, because it was difficult to argue against. It's a fantastic all-rounder. And we've got this one for sale now at £3.99, UK VAT paid. That's a lot of boat, lot of boat for that kind of money. Okay, it needs some TLC and it won't suit everybody, but it's a great boat. However, it has one big flaw. Okay, so the big flaw was this, quite simple. It didn't have a mid-master cabin. So when I was at the shows, people would come on, they would love everything about the boat. They, they would then ask, where's the master? I said, the master is at the bow. It didn't have the mid-master and they would go and buy something else. And Fairline kept hold of this forward master design because they didn't want to compromise the sea keeping and all the other things that you get. For example, you know, that utility there, that is where part of the master cabin would be. 
Now, Sunseeker and Princess and some of the other manufacturers brought out the Midmasters early, but everything has a plus and a negative. The problem with the Midmaster is it raises the freeboard, so the height of the boat goes up because you need headroom in the master. That upsets the sea keeping. Um, and also sometimes to make the master work, you have to change the direction the engines are fitted and put the power forwards to a V box and then backwards, which again makes the back of the boat more stern heavy. So every boat has pros and cons. This ticks nearly all of them, but that one flaw is a big one. And that's the reason why some people don't buy it. But if you can put up with that, then it's an unbeatable boat, especially at these prices. Oh, just one more thing. I know I keep going on about it, but please, please, please press subscribe if you're enjoying this channel. We have such a laugh making these videos and I think there's some useful information in there somewhere. So please just click it. It will make our day. Thanks very much. Okay, so come out this utility. God, that's heavy. And you fold these, as you can see, it's not massive. You fold these doors out of the way. <coughs> you get on 